Hey Lumen, and welcome to your course on intermittent fasting. There are so many different diets out there, but there is one main thing that makes intermittent fasting different. It's an approach that doesn't tell you what to eat, but when to eat. So before we get into the nitty gritty of intermittent fasting and why it might be something you'll want to incorporate into your daily life, I want to go over the basics of these windows of eating and what that may look like for you. Every person will be different in how long their daily fast should be. The idea is that if you take 24 hours we have in a day and split them into two categories, eating and fasting, you have an intermittent fasting routine. The fasting options we're gonna look at today range anywhere from 12 to 16 hours. So for example, if you have a fasting window of 14 hours, then you'll have an eating window of 10. This could be having your first meal at 8 a.m and finishing your last meal by 6 p.m. Since every person is different, in this course, we're gonna show you how to use your Lumen device, pretty cool, to define your specific window for optimal results. So, are you ready to learn about the benefits of intermittent fasting? Every diet plan tells you how amazing it is, but not all have been as heavily researched as intermittent fasting. For the sake of this course and big words, we will refer to intermittent fasting as IF going forward. I want to make sure you truly understand how each of these benefits actually affects you. So let's start. IF could help to improve metabolic flexibility and fat adaptation. What the heck does that mean? It means it enhances our body's ability to use both carbs and fats as fuel when it's needed by reducing our energy consumption in an attainable way. We have a specific eating window that decreases the ability to overeat because it limits snacking during fasting hours. IF aligns with your circadian rhythms, which could help with your sleep patterns and making sure your body is getting the rest it needs. More and more, we are realizing that sleep and recovery is one of the main factors in accomplishing your weight loss goals. Sounds like a pretty awesome way to eat if you ask me. So what's the next step? Well, it's to figure out how long you should be fasting for each day to get the best results. The goal with Lumen is always to reach a state of fat burn in the morning. So when you wake up, take your first measurement. If your Lumen reading is low, your body has already switched into a fat burning state. If this is the case, count back the hours till your last meal, and that should be your fasting window. If your lumen reading is on the higher side, your body is not quite burned through your liver glycogen stores. That's the energy from carbohydrates that your body stores to run all your bodily systems and keep you going. This is the energy that we want to burn through during our fast, so our body can then dip into its fat stores. Let's say your lumen levels were high when you woke up. At this point, you're gonna continue your fast. Continue to check your lumen levels every one to two hours until you get the low reading. Again, once you hit this, it's time to break your fast and count back the hours to your last meal. This again will be your fasting window. You ideally then want to start your fast the next day earlier based on the hours that you determined rather than fasting longer in the morning time. So basically we don't want to skip breakfast. If it gets to the point where your levels have been and are still high after a 16 hour fast, break the fast. At this point, your carb intake over the previous three to four days may have been higher than your body's ability to burn them. Take the next three to four days eat a low carb diet, 120 grams or less, and start the process again. If you've been eating low carb and you're seeing that your levels are still high, well, this is when you wanna keep watching because we're gonna troubleshoot that. Now, let's say your lumen levels drop or you woke up in a state of fat burn. Wouldn't you want to increase your fasting window so you can keep burning fat? That would seem to make sense, but this is not how our bodies work. It's extremely important that we do not keep our lumen levels low all the time, or it can have the opposite effect of what we are looking for. So now comes the fun part, the actual eating of the foods. While you do not need to be measuring your levels all day long, if you do decide to, you can use your levels to decide when to carb up. This comes in handy when you have a workout that you want energy for or want to see how certain foods affect you. 
Here are some of the times you may want to check your levels, but it is not mandatory. Pre and post-workout. So pre-workout, we want to have energy. We want to feel good during them. So we can not only push ourselves, but increase our endurance and strength. So 30 minutes before your workout, I want you to take a measurement. If you're on the lower end, it's time to incorporate some carbs into your pre-workout snack. We want your body to have energy to burn during exercise so that it does not tap into your muscle glycogen stores. Yes, our muscles store energy as well. They need this energy for not only the workout, but for the recovery after. So if your levels are on the higher side, you're ready to go. No need to carb up at this point. After the workout, it's time to take another breath. Give yourself a solid 30 minutes to let your heart rate come down and maybe a tad longer if the workout was really intense. If your levels are low at this point, it's time to incorporate carbs again, this time with a serving of protein. These carbs are going to help your body recover and repair and are vital to improving your metabolic flexibility. Are your levels still high? Your workout may not have kicked you into fat burn mode, which is fine. At this point, you're going to focus your post-workout meal on a high quality protein source and keep your carbs on the lower side, but make sure you have tons of veggies. How about if we just want to see how our meals are affecting our levels? Measure 30 minutes before a meal. If your levels are low, aim to have more carbs in that next meal, like sweet potato or whole grain toast paired with a protein and obviously some veggies. And if your levels are high, focus on high quality proteins and fats instead. The idea is that you want your body to get the carbs and protein it needs when your levels are low and the healthy fats and protein it needs when your levels are high. This is how you teach your body to burn both fat and carbs as fuel. So with any change in lifestyle or diet, we probably should learn how to troubleshoot, meaning we should figure out what to expect could go wrong. Now, this sounds like it all could be seamless, but the body can be tricky and our eating habits from the past could still be affecting how our body processes certain macronutrients today. The body should take about two to four weeks to become accustomed to this way of eating before you start to see results. But what if it doesn't? Let's go back to the situation where carbs are low and your levels remain high or your levels were low and you continued to fast and then they started to go up. This is a sign that your body is going through a state of stress. Yes, you are actually stressing your body out because it needs a different form of energy that you're not giving it. When our bodies get stressed, we stimulate the stress hormone cortisol. What does cortisol do? Well, in the liver, high cortisol levels increase a process that can turn protein into a sugar and decrease the synthesis of this sugar. So at this point, cortisol can trigger the body to break down muscle mass, some of which turns into glucose, which may also trigger a higher lumen level. This is why fasting for greater than 16 hours is not recommended by lumen. Our goal with any diet, including this one, should be to fuel our body so that it has the energy it needs in the right forms for optimal health. Your body will always revert back to survival. So if you are constantly depleting it and leaving it in a state of stress, it will do all that it can to hold on to every ounce of energy. And most of the time, this will be stored as fat. So like all diets, intermittent fasting is not one size fits all. And there will be times when it just does not work for your schedule. That's okay. The goal with this and pretty much anything else is to remain consistent. So with IF, give yourself time and be patient as you learn what your body needs to reach your health goals and to be able to perform at its best.